I used to say that she, she was my heart. And, uh, So she really took my heart with her when she died. I feel like it's broken forever, but I, I'm not sure. It's only two and a half years ago. Pictures of Heidi's daughter Andrina cover her home. Her teddies still sit on her bed. Andrina killed herself just before her 18th birthday. Then... Earlier this year, Heidi was contacted by some Norwegian journalists. I got a text message that they was working uh, with a po project uh, about uh, youths and um, suicides and social media's impact on this. And in their research, um, Andrina's name often come up. I did a, sh a report uh, a year ago in a small community in Norway where three young girls, 15 and 16 year olds, had uh, killed themselves within a short period of time. And it turned out that one of these girls had uh, been on Instagram and had a secret account sharing self-harm and suicidal thoughts. Anna Marta started researching this Instagram community this network of hundreds of locked accounts posting often disturbing content. Her team discovered at least 14 other suicides linked to the community. Then we started uh, calling, phoning, talking to all the families um, to confirm the suicides. And that's when I got hold of Andrine's mother. Uh, and she said, uh, after talking to me for... I think uh, a couple of times she said, uh, oh, I've actually got her mobile. It's in the hallway in a cardboard box. It came from the police a couple of weeks after Andrine killed herself. And she said, I know, I've always known that there is something on the phone that I don't want to see, but I have to see it. Now I have to see it. So she opened the phone. This was the secret, locked Instagram account that Andrina posted on every day for the last three months of her life. In some videos, she's dancing. Oh, I, I love to see it. But that's alongside pictures of serious self-harm, videos of her crying. <laughs> Yes, it is. Andrina was in supervised accommodation when she took her life. She'd moved out of home after years of self-harming and suicide attempts. She'd been hospitalised multiple times. It took me two days to go through it. The hardest thing was that she had documented her last days, her last hours, until she took her life. So it was almost like she was screaming her that. It was hard to witness. She called me back and told me that Andrine had uh, killed herself online, that it was several posts from her actual suicide. In one of her last Instagram posts, Andrina wrote, Just do it. No one is going to miss you anyway. The comment below it reads... Don't do it, in capital letters. So this is uh, our investigation room. This Andrina's mum, Heidi, handed her daughter's phone over, and Anna Marta's investigation team used digital forensic techniques to find out as much as they could about Andrina's connections and how many other self-harmers she was linked to online. It's just getting darker and darker. She's hurting herself. She's figuring out new ways to hurt herself. She's talking about how she's hiding stuff to hurt herself, how she wants to die. They also had access inside the community through a dummy Instagram account. They went through Andrina's followers and in turn their followers and found 1,000 locked accounts connected to hers, posting similar dark content talking about mental health issues, about suicide, about self-harm. Around 500 were in Norway and the rest all over the world, including the UK. 
there are all sorts of degrees of mental health issues, from the most serious sort of diagnosis to um, just being generally depressed or struggling with anxiety. The average age uh, is 19. They're often in and out of hospitals. And there's lots of support, lots of attention, and they all sort of have in common that they don't believe that they can get help anywhere else. They don't have much faith in the public healthcare system. And what were the problems you saw? I very quickly uh, discovered that when you post suicidal stuff or self-harm, uh, you get more attention. We feel like we have to do something serious to get heard and to get help. Um, and that our words aren't enough. And therefore people are using Instagram to talk to others and say how they are feeling. 22-year-old Ingebjerg admits that she used to have one of these accounts. Do you think it can make people worse? Yeah, I know it can because I think the community is making people worse because they give you ideas on how you can kill yourself, how you can hide your illness from the people around and even people who don't mean to affect others in a negative way do it because they post pictures of serious self-harm and people think, oh, my cuts aren't deep enough, then I have to do it like her next time. I've been told that the more extreme the stuff you post is, the more harmful, the more likes you get. Is that the case? Yeah, you get more support and more friends, you, the more serious the things you do. And that must be quite addictive. Yeah, I know it is. Ingebjerg was on Instagram and saw as Andrina put up her last post before ending her life. I felt like I was watching a suicide, that I was in the room with her watching it happen and I couldn't do anything. All the other girls in Instagram was like her audience. Do you worry that Andrina's posts, her behaviour, showing her own suicide, influenced other people? I know it did, but I um, don't like to think about it, but I, I know. Of the 1,000 accounts connected to Andrina's that were discovered by the NRK journalists, there are at least 22 in the UK. So these are some of the UK accounts and they say things like trigger warning all over them. They have emojis that represent suicide attempts, that represent hospital admissions. By cross-referencing other social media accounts, we've been able to speak to one of the young women. She has one of those locked accounts and used it to document her struggles with severe mental health problems her suicide attempts, self-harm, and hospital admissions. So people would actually comment on the kind of cuts you were posting. She feels although the Instagram community could be very supportive, she also experienced people saying things like, your cut isn't big enough. She says there was a sense of competition as to who was the sickest. Heidi thinks her daughter Andrina was pushed to greater extremes by Instagram. I think she learned from internet uh, uh, different ways how to self-harm and take her own life. The way she did it, I think she learned it from internet. As time has passed and I, when I have seen what's posted and how um, active she was on that uh, Instagram community. Uh, I realized that Instagram basically took my daughter's life. That's what I feel. If she didn't have Instagram, she would have uh, uh, seeked more help in real life. 
Instagram technically doesn't allow images that promote self-harm or suicide. This year, it's completely banned all graphic self-harm posts. But their computers can't catch everything. Some images are missed. Some people now post more abstract pictures to represent their suicide attempts. So these are um, from uh, just uh, the last week and a half. These are all posts from suicidal girls, uh, either very strong suicidal thoughts or actual suicide attempts. Uh, it's 48 of them uh, in just a week and a half and these are just the ones we were able to find not being able to be online 24-7. So these, there will be much more than this, but I find 48 posts like this in, in a week and a half, it's quite disturbing. From your time inside the network, how does the way Instagram works, its algorithms, push this kind of content towards people? Well, Instagram said in February that they were not going, going to recommend uh, girls or users who had posted harmful content or dangerous material to other users. But we've seen in just the past few weeks, uh, we've been able to see how uh, Norwegian girls who had tried to kill themselves and posting it on Instagram uh, in the same day are being recommended to other girls on the network. That's how I feel Instagram is keeping this network alive and keeping it going and growing. We have honestly gone out and said to experts in this field, you know, should we have any of this kind of content related to mental health, suicide or self-injury on, on Instagram? And they've come back with a resounding yes, because we, sh we do have a part to play in not stigmatising the sharing of this kind of, the, of, of expression when you're having a tough time. No one is saying that Instagram is responsible for the mental health problems that some of these girls are going through. But when you speak to their parents, they really do feel in some cases that their daughter would not be dead if it were not for Instagram making their problems worse. How do you respond to that? First of all, I'm a mum myself, so I can only imagine the pain and the anguish that the families are going through of each and every one of the young women affected by this. We want people to be able to come to Instagram to express themselves, but we are deeply committed to making sure that it's also that our responsibility is to keeping people who come to Instagram safe and not seeing what could be potentially harmful material. The way we do that is through um, technology, uh, a mixture of uh, what we call machine learning, um, which we do at scale, and human reviewers. There's a reason that Ingebjörg has stayed part of this Instagram network. She feels she has to. She's watched Andrina and other friends post their suicides and has now taken it upon herself to try and stop other people doing the same. She keeps an eye on the community from her phone, routinely calls the police when people are in danger. The Norwegian journalists have nicknamed her the lifeguard. You have to make a really difficult judgment call and figure out how dangerous what they're posting is. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, to seeing what's when people are actively suicidal and when they're just having a bad time. And that must make you anxious about being online and or not being online and missing something. Yeah, I'm scared that if I don't know, notice when people are posting these things, then no one will do anything about it. Because a lot of people are scared to call the police. How difficult was it for you personally spending all this time in such a dark network? I don't know. I feel like I've just been like shutting off. I think it's, it, it affects me in ways that I don't really see at the moment. Uh, you know, um, but I'm not as, as good of a friend or a girlfriend that I used to be because I haven't got time for anybody else's problems because I got all these girls <laughs> and their problems. What would you say to a mum who's worried about her daughter? I didn't talk to Andrina about this Instagram because I was afraid that she would be angry and do more self-harm because she was angry at me. And, but, um, 
I regret that I didn't uh, didn't do that. So to another mom I would say, uh, don't do the same mistake. Talk to your daughter. Talk about it.